Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 12, Chapter 1 The Staccato of Marching Jackboots, Part 4. And before we start, this video contains spoilers from the anime and manga series. And by the way guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I couldn't believe the demon I had summoned when I was about to evolve into a demon lord was such a prominent figure. I knew he was very strong, yet evidently, he was even more dangerous than I'd anticipated. No way, don't tell me you didn't know, unbelievable. I thought you were careless, but I never expected you to be clueless. Leon and Ruminaz stares hurt. After all, it couldn't be helped, right? How was I supposed to know he was that big of a deal if he answered a random summoning of mine? Even Raphael San was speechless. Although, that reaction wasn't directed towards Diablo's true identity, but rather at my ignorance. It was under the impression that I already knew about the primordial demons. Come to think of it, I felt that Elmija, the Empress of Sarian, had mentioned the primordials before. That would explain why she was so wary of Diablo, she already knew his true identity. Had I been more attentive, I would have noticed Diablo's real character much earlier. Well, this was what you called, making assumptions. I never dug any deeper nor did I try to bring it up. For Raphael San, it merely decided that there was no need to inform me. No matter how brilliant your partner was, if you didn't fully utilize it, then it was useless. Never had this been more true. Putting aside my surprise, Diablo began to share how he met me. Apparently, it went back to my encounter with Shizu San. There seemed to be a connection between Diablo and Shizu San, and when he sensed that she was about to die, he happened to visit this place. It was a surprise that Diablo already had his eyes on us back then, but I had no clue regarding his intention for doing so. A low-ranking demon from my lineage stole my position in line and ended up getting summoned by Rimuru-sama instead, that was the height of my sorrow. However, I stayed calm and waited for another opportunity, and splendidly enough, I was able to successfully respond to Rimuru-sama's summoning. Diablo finished, grinning from ear to ear. Then, Diablo responding to the summoning wasn't pure luck, but rather inevitable since he was already aiming for it in the first place? I was so taken aback that my head started to hurt. Also, this was news to me, but Diablo was evidently jealous of Beretta and tried to purge him behind my back. Despite that, he mentioned how he couldn't hurt Beretta because it would have been sacrilegious to damage the body I had created for him. This body is handmade by Rimuru-sama, warned Beretta, so if you lay a finger on it, you will incur his displeasure. I was dumbfounded, to say the least. But honestly, Diablo's story was excessively long. The thought that someone should go and stop him occurred to me, yet Diablo's fervor was too great for anyone to interfere. There was no other option. I had to bite the bullet. Diablo, Diablo Kun, that's enough. The meeting is about to start again. Following my lead, Guy spoke next. You're already satisfied, aren't you? More importantly, that guy Dino is also here, right? Can you call him over for me? Prompted by Guy's words, Diablo's endless chatter had finally come to an end. Well then, I shall summon Dino-sama. Shuna, who had sadly missed her window to escape from this torment, left with a polite bow. She ran away, the fact that I thought of Shuna this way was proof that I was at my wit's end. But I'm just about to reach the good part. While Diablo obviously still had a lot more to say, everyone shared the same sentiment and simply ignored him. I didn't know what he might even begin to reveal if we heard any more of his story. Also, it was better for Diablo to keep his mouth shut for the sake of my own peace of mind. Guy's seat had apparently been set up in the midst of the uproar. It was a guest armchair brought in by Leon's subordinates from an adjacent waiting room. Oh, how thoughtful of you. Guy's words were answered by Leon's subordinate knights, Alrose and Claude, with a light bow. The two were apparently already acquainted with Guy. Otherwise, neither of them would have dared to engage in such reckless behavior, given that this was Guy we were talking about here. I should have prepared his seat, considering he was my guest, but with what just took place, I didn't have enough time to pay attention to these kinds of matters. I might have offended Guy if I hadn't offered him something, so I was grateful those two guys were here. The secretary who was supposed to assist me was, well, too engrossed in his storytelling. And my other so-called secretary, Sheehan, never left my side, like it wasn't part of her job responsibility. Sorry about that, I apologized. No, don't worry about it. We are also aware of your majesty Rimuru's circumstances. Aren't you keeping people away from this room so we could be at ease? If so, then this was the least we could do. These two, Alrose and Claude, were really nice people. 
Diablo and Xi'an should take notes from them. Listen, you guys have to be attentive like that. Kufufufufu, I spoke a little too passionately. While Diablo appeared to have wanted to pin the blame on Guy for dropping by unexpectedly, he normally wouldn't have made such a blunder. But I guess this was just bad timing. Yes, this was a good learning experience. Xi'an was rather upfront. This girl's only good at talking the talk. I silently prayed that this incident would contribute to their development. Guy plonked down on the armchair, exuding his cavalier attitude. At the same time, Shuna returned with Dino in tow. For some reason, Ramirez also came along, and, putting all the things that had just happened aside, the meeting resumed once again. The first topic of discussion was about the primordial demons. Then, Dino, let me hear your excuse. What excuse? Dino naturally responded to Guy's inquiry. However, his attitude struck a nerve with Guy. Don't fuck with me. Why didn't you stop this guy from naming those three? He's got a point. That is important, you know? It seemed that this guy referred to me, but if I'm being honest, I wouldn't have entertained the thought of naming them, had I known how dangerous they truly were. Although it was too late now, he should have at least warned me. Listen, what the hell do you think I sent you here for? Um, sightseeing? Wrong. For reconnaissance, reconnaissance. Looking at their exchange, I thought Guy was rather hot under the collar. While I had already suspected as much, Dino was now definitely confirmed to have been a spy. But really, I wished Guy hadn't openly outed him as a spy to the face of the very person being spied on. And you, too, don't make that innocent expression as if you had nothing to do with this. Uh oh, I got dragged into this as well. The fact that I was being scolded by the same people who decided to commit espionage against me was outrageous. On the other hand, I was certainly the cause for such behavior. I wanted to complain, but it'd be unwise to gripe without thinking things through. This was guy we were talking about here, provoking him was definitely not a good idea. Ga ha ha ha, don't fret over little things, guy. This isn't the first time he's granted names willy-nilly, Veldora San unexpectedly backed me up. Keep it it, I cheered in my mind. Shut up, Ruminas shouted. Don't interrupt when the adults are in the middle of a conversation. Oh okay. Veldora fell silent after that harsh rebuke. His inability to talk back demonstrated how wimpy he really was. Well, thanks to Veldora's sacrifice, their finger pointing had shifted away from my direction. I didn't want to blow this opportunity, so I started to needle guy with my grievances. Okay, okay. The reason Dino came here was to keep an eye on me, right? I'll put aside my complaint about that for the time being, and while Dino is at fault for not stopping me, Shouldn't the person who entrusted Dino with this job and sent him to my place also be held liable for poor supervision? Don't you think so, Guy San? This was, in other words, sharing responsibility. It'd be no fair if I were the only one being criticized here, so my plan was to ensure Dino and Guy got their fair share. Dino's involvement was already clear, so all I needed was Guy's confession. That's right, Guy. Basically, I can't do surveillance stuff for the life of me. It's frankly surprising that you thought of making me work. Dino appeared a lot more perceptive in this kind of situation given how he caught on to my plot. Guy looked frustrated. You bastards. We had to find a way to settle this quickly, all the while being careful not to provoke him any further. First and foremost, I didn't have time to stop him, Dino said. When I saw Rimuru with the primordials, I was totally baffled, speechless. After all, there's three of them, you know? I accepted the matter with Diablo because he's always been an oddball, but the idea that someone like Testarossa, along with those other two, would willingly serve another person was something I couldn't even begin to imagine. I guess so. Oh, Dino is trying to shirk responsibility with his remark, and Guy is agreeing with him. This was a bad development. Me too. I added, I wholeheartedly believed Diablo when he brought them here and promised that they would be helpful, and so I welcomed them. I never thought that they would turn out to be such big shots, since everyone was very polite about agreeing to work for me. They're under Diablo's direct control, and he's the one responsible for them. If anything happens, I'll also be held accountable, but it's only natural to trust your subordinates, right? Trying to come up with a good excuse, I redirected the blame towards Diablo. When you got down to the crux of the matter, Diablo was the root cause of all this trouble. That much was certain. I glanced at Diablo, giving him a hint that he should do his best to take on Guy's anger. When I did, for some reason, Diablo nodded happily after hearing my remark. Kufufufufu, Rimuru Sama's faith and his words fill me with joy. I will have to work harder to live up to his expectations.